Hello everyone, hope you're doing well. Today I thought we'd have another look at the squadron activity improvements and the vehicles that are going to be coming into the game with this new mechanic. What I'm going to do is show you them in the asset viewer and go through which versions they are and talk about why I think these all are actually pretty good picks because of their tech tree equivalents or at least hopefully their tech tree equivalents that they could get. So the first thing to understand is uh, if you want any more information on this I did do a full set of I believe two videos looking at the the squadron activity improvements. The basic gist of it is that War Thunder is going to introduce, uh, you know, uh, coming sometime in this update, probably in the next month or so, the uh, idea that through squadron activity, you yourself can get your uh, hands on these specific uh, vehicles. So the idea is, just like how you research uh, tech tree vehicles in the tree, you'll also be able to research these squadron vehicles through your activity through your squadron. And uh, there is going to be a calculation there that we don't know exactly how it is, but basically more activity means that you are going to get more points towards these vehicles. And um, I thought, why not have a look at them in the files, because, well, they're there in the files. And War Thunder, especially the CDK kit, has this wonderful thing called the Asset Viewer, which means that you can go into any file and have a look at what is actually represented in it. So we're going to have a look at the B-48 Firecrest, the SKR PR-35, and also the M901 ITV, and uh, have a look at what they probably could carry, or, you know, how they're going to be. Also, later on, I will have some user missions of each of these vehicles, kindly created by M Abrams, and also thank you to Gentle Speed for helping me out as well. So... Uh, let's get into it. And by the way, a lot of people have been asking me recently, where are these squadron vehicles? You know, it says coming in update 1.87. They also said that it will be coming after one of the, uh, you know, after update 1.87 as well, not on update 1.87. And I've got a feeling that, as I said, in the next month or so, these will become available. So even though they're not available now, hopefully... In the near future, they will be available. So let's start off with the B-48 Firecrest. So this is what it has uh, looks like in the game. Uh, it does have a fully-fledged cockpit, as you can see by the B-48 Firecrest cockpit uh, that you can see on the top left. So you can see the fully HD one right here. There we go. <laughs> uh, we're sat a little bit low in the chair, so let's just uh, move up a little bit. But you can basically see how it is uh, fully modeled. Uh, even the damage is shown, which is one of the nice things on the asset viewer. Uh, on top of this as well, uh, it is fully HD inside, even though it may not look like it. And this is what the outside of it looks like. So one of the interesting things about the B-48 is because it was only done in prototype stage, so there's three prototypes made. You had the first one, the second one was allocated to uh, general testing, uh, so it never actually flew. It was more for, um, uh, you know, it, it was more for just uh, testing out the airframe, and then the third one also flew. So the question is, which one are we getting into game? And the only real way of telling the difference between them is the wings themselves. So you can see the wings here. Uh, if we have a look at the Blackburn B-48 Firecrest on the BAE Systems Heritage site, uh, you can see the wings, uh, which are very much similar to the Corsair wings, and then the third prototype, which is uh, right here, uh, it has a uh, the reduced wing dihedral. So this would be seen as a large wing dihedral, just like uh, you have on uh, the Corsair. This is a lot lower. So from my ideas um, and uh, from what I can tell, I believe that this one, whoops, is the first uh, of the three prototypes. So therefore the first one uh, which actually flew. And this means that it opens up uh, Gaijin and War Thunder to be able to put the third prototype in uh, in the game, uh, which I think is uh, incredibly important to be able to put it in the standard tech tree. I don't want these vehicles to only be available for people who are in squadrons, and giving tech tree equivalents are very important to me, just like it is with other 
um, with other machines as well when it comes to premiums. Now, let's talk about the general armaments that we're seeing uh, on this machine. So the first thing is the guns. So the guns that you can see are 50 caliber machine guns. I tested these on the dev server uh, in the user mission and it had two 50 caliber M3s. So the similar guns that you see on the Bearcat. Now this isn't a crazy armament. Uh, also it has some uh, areas below it as you can see which are designed to carry rockets and then obviously bombs and then centrally uh, most importantly a torpedo. Remember that this was supposed to be a replacement and an upgrade over the Firebrand. This didn't really work out too well, but uh, that was what it was designed for. And on top of this, it can carry an array of stuff. Now, what is uh, kind of interesting is when I've looked at sources for the B-48 Firecrest, what I've found is not two 50 caliber machine guns, but two gun pods. Right, so you can see uh, here capacity and armament, single pilots and provision for torpedo, underwind rockets and drop tanks. So all of these are represented here with the addition of some bombs as well, which would be uh, mounted on the fuselage in this area that you can see like on this little bomb point here. So it has provisions for rockets, it has provision for bombs, it has provisions for torpedoes, but uh, unless we're going to get underwing uh, gun pods, which are generally shown on these models uh, when it comes to the uh, asset viewer, I think there might be a little bit of an issue with misreading uh, what uh, guns or uh, what this is supposed to have because it would be very odd going from the firebrand uh, a plane which has a good armament behind it when it comes to its main armaments to switch to a machine which only had 250 cals and on top of this uh, the first and the third prototype you can actually see from these pictures never had wing mounted guns uh, so you can see here and then you can see uh, here there is no oops sorry uh, there is no hole for a wing-mounted gun. They were instead supposed to carry, as I said, gun pods. And that is the issue I think we're running into with this thing. So uh, let's get on to the next vehicle, uh, which is the M901, the improved tow vehicle. There is actually an M901 as well, uh, which is like this truck with uh, massive missiles on the back of it. And I'm sure we are not getting that into the game. So if we have a look at the asset viewer, here is the M901 ITV, uh, as uh, I would like to describe it as Wally, because it reminds me of Wally out of that uh, animated movie. And uh, you can see that it is uh, an M113 with a tow launcher on top of it. The M901 had uh, two specific tow launchers with a weapons guidance system on it. Uh, it is mouse guided in game right now and you can see where the toast is supposed to be launched from and you can also see the little magnifier uh, or the little optics port in the center. Uh, on top of this it does have smoke grenades uh, from either side, uh, eight of them in total and one of the nice things also about the asset viewer is you can see when the vehicle is damaged so this is what it'll look like and then also the x-ray. So you can see uh, who is inside. So it's a crew of four. You got a driver, uh, what looks like a gunner, and then two loaders. You have the missiles uh, on this side. So you have, let's see, two, four, six, eight, and then two inside uh, the launcher right here, meaning that. Uh, overall at least 10 ammunition from what I've read I believe it was 12 but I could be wrong about that uh, so uh, make sure to check that and then on top of it you got the transmission and also the engine so overall it just seems kind of easy uh, the way I see this uh, working is that uh, it would just pop its head over a little bush and uh, you'll be able to fire over it without having to expose the rest of your vehicle uh, something that I don't know uh, if uh, it is or not in the game is if this has functionality to come down uh, because in uh, when it comes to War Thunder, this uh, is something that can happen. This can, uh, you know, fall down over here. Uh, sorry, not in War Thunder, in real life, so it can be transported a lot easier. Uh, on top of this, there are tech tree equivalents that could come to the game. You've got the M901, which is this, and the M901A1 and A2. They have different firing systems, which instead of firing TO-1 missiles, uh, which is what this fires, they fire TO-2 instead. Uh, so you could definitely have a standard tech tree vehicle. 
uh, alongside the uh, one that you have over here. Uh, you know, so for me, this is once again another good choice. Uh, the last vehicle is the SKR PR35. It's a rank 3 Soviet ship. My feeling is since they've just moved down the PR159, this one is also going to get moved down to rank 2. Uh, so the reason for that is because they're incredibly similar. Uh, so let's, uh, here's the PR159, the one that we already have in game, and here is the PR35. You can see that they are slightly different, but when it comes to the general ideas behind them, they are very, very similar. So let's talk about the armament that is on this, but first of all, a little bit of history to try and show you how uh, simple or uh, how how these are very sim uh, very similar to each other. So the Petia class uh, is the PR159 light frigate or frigate, and the Merca class, which came after it, is also a frigate. Uh, the if you look at their main weaponry and if you look at their main attributes, they are very similar to each other. So for me in game, this machine here, uh, which is the uh, Merca class already has a tech tree equivalent in the form of the PR-159 uh, because its main armament and everything else is very very similar to it so uh, it is nice that they're adding a vehicle that already has its standard tech tree uh, you know equivalent in it so the SKR PR-35 it has two 76 millimeters on the front which are fast firing just like the 159s it has massive sets of anti-submarine rockets on it because why the hell not? It has two sets right here. You've got the radar dish, and then you've got uh, various forms of radar. You have uh, some a very nice HD models, especially this rowing boat. Uh, then you have five sets of torpedoes that you can see here. And then uh, you have another dual set of 76mm rapid-fire guns and more rockets on the back of it. So this has access to a lot of rockets. It has access to five uh, torpedoes and then it has access to the dual 76 millimeter guns two of them so this won't have a lot of armor but it will have a hell of a lot of firepower if any of you have come up against the PR159 with the 76 millimeters you'll know how much damage these things can dish out uh, when they definitely feel like it so don't underestimate uh, these machines I think is the best uh, way of putting it so these frigates that the uh that the oops, sorry about that uh the <laughs> frigate that the uh soviets have so this is a destroyed when it's sinking and then this is the x-ray so you can see on the x-ray we have the rockets there is the bridge we have all the ammunition below it uh labeled in these areas here then we have just uh two what look like engines and two transmissions uh, in the machine actually where are the engines i feel like Unless these are the engines and also transmissions, which they might be, you know, they might be modeled like that. There's a fuel tank there, and uh, then you've got these things here, uh, which are, could be the engines. Let's have a look. Oh, look, it also has some uh, depth charges on it as well, so uh, it'll get that functionality as well. Hopefully at one point uh, those will actually mean something. Ah, yes, there we go. So uh, it is looking like that uh, there is some kind of engine or something back here, uh, whereas the transmissions are in the center. That's really interesting. But yeah, this is the SKR PR-35, the last uh, squadron vehicle that uh, we'll be getting. Uh, you know, you can research any of them that you want when they come out. Hopefully they get announced soon. And as I said, I'll have a look at some user missions on them. The anchor looks lovely. I love it how they've added the star, just to give it a little bit of pizzazz. Overall, I'm very, very excited to see these three vehicles come to game. Anyway, I hope you all have a wonderful day, and I'll see you next time.